your eyes Get some rest I'm by your side Welcome to HortTube. My name is Jim Putnam. This is kind of day two of my uh, annual and perennial uh, planting that I'm doing uh, all over this yard over the next week or two. I'm past my frost-free date and I have acquired a ton of things, uh, probably 50-50 uh, uh, perennial or annual. Some of them are perennials in warmer climates, but uh, will be annuals for me. Uh, once I get a year under some of these things that I'm, these permanent perennial plantings I have, I won't need as many annuals uh, next year, but I'm trying to make it look full uh, in this first year, first full season of this front yard uh, landscape. This area right here, I'm using uh, several uh, Agastache, and if you're not familiar with Agastache, it's in, it's in the same mint family that salvia belongs to, and, and mint, and, and most, most herbs, uh, they're great for being tough as nails, almost bulletproof perennials that bloom pretty much uh, all summer long. I have a variety called Rosy Posy that's going in in that space, and it's kind of a pinky uh, purple color, and it'll be about this tall. Uh, this is a, uh, uh, a dogwood behind me that's about to start uh, opening up. This is a uh, Empress of China dogwood. So it'll be right here, and then I have some Arizona Sun, which is a, uh, a yellow. I was able to get a four pack of these, and there's just gonna be four of them right about here. So it'll be yellow flowers there. And then I actually have a Caryopteris uh, right here. Um, this one's called First Choice. I grew this one for years uh, at my nursery. This is a shrub. I can keep it somewhere right about the height of this, uh, of the fence, maybe a little bit taller. And this blooms uh, in the fall, really. It's kind of, or very, very late summer. Uh, so it's going to be uh, right in that area. I have a couple of other Agastache that I had planted last year. So this is kind of, uh, we'll call it Agastache Way uh, in this area. Fantastic plants again for, uh, for pollinators. The channel's grown like crazy recently and uh, I, I get questions a lot of times about this shovel. This is a trenching shovel and I have, we have clay soils here in my area of North Carolina and I've always used one of these trenching shovels. This one was about probably three, inch long, three inches longer uh, when I bought it. Uh, uh, but that's what I would acquire uh, for digging, especially, I mean, for me, you know, I'm six foot tall and over 200 pounds and I can put a regular shovel in the ground. Um, a, a lot of people can't. And so this trenching shovel uh, allows me, it's just a, it's a thinner blade. And so it's just easier to push it into the ground uh, and, and, and makes, it makes especially quick work. When I'm planting tons of things in a tight area, like I'm doing over here, and I don't want to damage, you know, I don't want to damage these bulbs I already have planted. Uh, I'm planting this Caryopteris in the middle of some alliums uh, that are in the process of blooming. The little narrow shovel helps out a lot uh, with that as well. So I'm just going to sink these in the ground real quickly, and then I'm going to jump over to the other side of the fence. There's some perennials going in the ground on that side uh, that I'll show you. And then after they're all in the ground, I'll, 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 I'll walk through and show you a close-up of them. The entire purpose of this fence uh, being out at the street here is obviously not to keep people out because I can literally just step over it and it's got, uh, it's got places where you can just walk through it. It's really to differentiate, uh, give me a backdrop uh, to uh, basically create two different gardens out of this uh, street uh, garden area. I'll be able to stand up here on the front porch and look this way and have a layer of pieces coming up to the top of the fence. Uh, lower things right beside the turf on that other side and then taller things as they reach the fence. And then the same thing out here uh, at the street area. There'll be uh, lower things out toward the street and I'll put some taller things right up here against the fence. And basically I'm creating kind of two garden spaces uh, out of one uh, kind of narrow, narrow spot. This is also a very hot uh, full sun area. I'm using lots of salvias out here and uh, Mexican sage. This is Mexican sage here. Uh, I do have one bee bomb going in behind me. Uh, I've got a May night salvia uh, going in in this area. This one, uh, fantastic salvia, super early blooming every year. We we'll probably won't bloom all summer in my area. Uh, up in the areas a little further north, it will definitely bloom a little longer. But I do uh, have always loved this salvia. I like the foliage on it. Stays um, once it's finished flowering. Uh, I'll, I'll deadhead it and I'll get some additional flowers, but doesn't rebloom uh, like some other salvias. I've got one other uh, uh, 
salvia going in closer to the camera that um, uh, that will fill this entire uh, space up. It's a purple flowering one. I've got some liatris that I did from bulbs uh, that are I've, I basically woke them up uh, in the containers. I did that in a video uh, a couple of months back and they're up in those containers and I'm just gonna pop them in the ground there. They'll bloom later in the summer. If I move way down here, uh, I have another, a couple other salvias going in. I have a yellow flowering cone, uh, yellow flowering cone flower that's going in out here by the road. I've got some butterfly weed coming back that I'll show you a close up of in a few, little while. I've got some leucanthemum uh, that will bloom kind of yellow whitish all summer. Uh, and uh, so anyway, I'm gonna get all these things in the ground and then I'll give you a closer view of them. So a quick tour around the uh, fence planting uh, this morning. This spot on the corner, I've just built this fence. I integrated these stones uh, into it to make it look like they had been here a long time. Uh, in that area, I definitely have to find something to plant. I haven't decided what's going there yet. I have a clematis, which is uh, laying on its side right now, has a couple flowers that's actually being planted inside of those three uh, rocks uh, very soon. Uh, last year, I knew this fence was coming, so I actually planted some things across the back of it. Uh, I've got this uh, white berrying uh, Calicarpa americana or uh, white berrying beautyberry. There's uh, three boxwoods that will just be evergreen backdrops. And then there's a hydrangea paniculata, uh, white flowering hydrangea in that space. And uh, if I come around uh, to the other side, I've got this butterfly bush uh, that's been here. This one's called, a, um, a it's a tower series of butterfly bush. This is the uh, white one. It's very vertical growing. Uh, these are going to be released next year and they're going to sell like crazy this thing this thing has grown like this like a little christmas tree really uh and continues to uh continues to do that blooms all summer uh here's some uh, uh, uh cone flowers that i did from seed last year and uh, they actually stayed evergreen through the winter i just didn't have a very cold a cold winter really so um, they're going to be blooming earlier than cone flowers are here normally i've got some alliums uh, uh, that i planted in the fall that are up in this spot, they are about to bloom or starting to open up. They're not as good as they'll be next year, uh, a year in the ground, and they'll be much better off. Here's some uh, butterfly weed. I always get questions on this channel about whether I'm growing butterfly weed. I've got it in several spots in the yard and it's all coming back uh, right now. This is that leucanthemum. Doesn't look like much now, but it'll bloom pretty much all summer. And typically uh, those Shasta daisies, um, will stay evergreen as well, uh, right along the ground level. That's that white or yellow flowering cone flower. There's some anemones that have finished flowering now. I'll end up planting something right over top of those that goes to sleep in the winter. So when they come back next spring, uh, nothing will be in their way. I put a gara here that has a purple new growth on it or um, whirling butterflies, people call these. This will be right at this gate, right at this gate entrance. Uh, stepping stones are being buried here and through the turf. Uh, all the way to the uh, to the front door. There's a few liatris right there that I just forgot to plant. They'll go in the ground in that spot. And then the rest of the way along this fence I showed you. Uh, oh, in the middle of these pansies. These pansies will be coming out soon and there'll be other annuals going in here for the, uh, for the summer. But uh, here is a, uh, um, a bee bomb in that space. Mexican uh, salvia here that will fill up this entire space these things can get three or four feet by three or four feet in a single season i'll cut it a couple times uh, during the season tend to bloom in the late summer uh, some other salvias that i had planted in the fall and i still have a ways to go i still have several other things i'm planting here and there's that may night salvia the liatris and uh, one other salvia up in that area that will bloom pretty much all summer in yesterday's video, I was planting uh, I was planting agapanthus, and I didn't show these uh, going in the ground. This is indigo frost, has the uh, purple, has the white center with the purple buds. Just beautiful, tons and tons of buds. On these, they're a little close to the turf, as you can see right here. This turf is actually being cut off right there, so these will end up with a little more room than they currently have. And this is um, Agastache Way is what I'm going to call it. Um, I'll show these during the summer. You will be amazed how industrial 
uh, all of these agastache are. And if you can, you know, find them at your garden centers now in the spring, um, these things will bloom um, throughout the summer, uh, uh, depending on where you live as to whether or not they're uh, perennial or not. The ones I have planted here are perennial for me. And I planted this Caryopteris. I don't know that I've ever covered Caryopteris on the channel. They're late summer flowering uh, shrubs, tend to be kind of upright and narrow. First choice is very reliably he reliable here for me in the south in the heat. And uh, here's that dogwood I mentioned right at the beginning, which is just starting to uh, show a little bit of color. But this thing will be solid white uh, very soon. So thank you guys for following along uh, with my progress on this landscape in Zone 7B, Raleigh, North Carolina. This really small urban lot as I continue to uh, develop the landscape and actually <laughs> work on the house as well because the house... Uh, is getting exterior work uh, this year but tons more things to go in the ground uh, over the next few weeks and uh, again thanks for following along with it